All right, today is about outputting our animations and uploading them to PhotoBucket and making a final storyboard. So let's get started. I have my um, organized stage. And this is the only file we need now need, as long as we've moved over all of our assets and we've started to animate it. So I'm going to open up that Photoshop. It's important to have your name as part of the file name, because these are the files we'll go back to for portfolio purposes and for printing. But of course, you can't print an animation right, without printing every frame of the page. So what I'm going to show you is how to make a clean storyboard. And by doing that, that becomes a good kind of two-dimensional print portfolio piece. But right now, I want you all to have your animations in their PSD form at their highest resolution. Right? So this is before we shrink it down. And I'm just going to show you an option. As long as your animation is working the way you want it to work, you can see all the beautiful colors there. The timing might be a little... Um, jittery, especially because this is hot, still full resolution, but you get the idea of it. Okay, this is how you would render it as a video. In the timeline window, you go down to the bottom left corner and you switch from storyboard mode, right, to what's called timeline view. And when you're in timeline view, you're able to render your video. This is just an extra step. It's not part of the assignment. But this is something that Photoshop now allows you to do with, with high-definition <coughs> animations. So if you render your video, it's good to trust default options. <laughs> it's going to take the full resolution. And mine is 11 by, basically 11 by 11 inches by 350. So this is pretty much good for a... Uh, a video projector screen at a movie theater. At least a square of that. It would look pretty decent. So if you really want to make your GIF fine art, you know, this is how you would you would output it. It's going to be outputted as an H.264 um, high quality. And we're going to send it to the desktop. So I'm going to, just going to select desktop as the folder. All frames. Again, just trust the defaults. Let's see how that works. Render. Ah, uh, the dimensions or frame rate are too large. So there are limits to this. So we might have to shrink it down. So the size, let's see, it should be a square. So before I render, go to your image <coughs> size. See what your pixel dimensions are. So it seems like its limiting factor is, is around 2,000. So I'm going to resample. I won't save this. Um, I'll save the video, but I won't save the PSD file. So I'll still keep my PSD file at largest resolution possible. But I'm going to resample and make it 8 by 8 inches by 300, okay, which is around 2,400 pixels. I think this is what I've done in the past. And I don't think that will break its, its rendering limits. It also depends how many frames you have, right? Because there are limits to how powerful this tool is. This isn't um, video, video editing software, which has to deal with memory in a very different way. So now we can <coughs> render video. Now, yes, I have a size that's 2400 by 23. 04 for some reason, so I was going to make it 2400 by 2400. Uh, the frame rate, this is what's interesting. I don't need 30 frames per second, right? I want um, more like 3 frames per second is what my video is, but I'm going to put 24 because that's smooth animation, right? That's kind of standard for animation, 24 frames per second. And remember, it's making those multiple frames out of my fewer frames. So it doesn't make sense to, it's, it's kind of like upscaling with, with, um, with pixel resolution. 
I don't need to overdo it. Okay, but now it's able to export. So keep it around 2,400 pixels. If you have to reduce your image somewhat, like I did, to eight by eight inches by around 300 pixels per inch, and then I did about 24 frames per second instead of the 30, which is the default, so that it can do it. Let's, while that's doing it, let's look at the past student examples. I'll just do past instructor examples for what these finished storyboards should look like. Because <clears throat> formatting is important, right? And you've put so much work into this animation and refining everything, it'd be a shame to have this not formatted well. So what we're trying to get are nine frames, just like our sketch storyboard, that are taken directly from our video, not from our GIF, but from our PSD. <laughs> Why are we taking it from the, the PSD file instead of the, the GIF file or GIF file? It's because we don't want to limit these images to only 256 colors. We want to keep them nice and smooth. And they should you know, line up somewhat with our sketch, but it depends what changes we had to make in our animation. And what you want is for there to be a clear change beginning, middle, to end. right? But it's interesting to see the changes here um, how you read this as a sequence and as a narrative and how that's very different than seeing the movement. For instance, you see the stars move very clearly here. You would never notice that in sequential still images, right? So animation and sequential art are, are kind of different art forms. All right, I have rendered the video. It rendered in that format slightly at different dimensions than I asked for. Um, but it rendered as an mp4 so that's what the dot h64 thing is and i can view it if i just open it up i can run it and it will play with quicktime which is like the preview on max for video files okay and look it's perfect actually it added a little bit to each side because I told it to. And so I shouldn't have. I should have trusted the default. And now if I want to loop it, I can say view and loop. And then it will play just like a GIF. I can even view it full screen. Let's enter full screen. And this is how I would play GIF animations in a gallery. <laughs> Full resolution. This is where you can really check if anything's off. And it renders pretty smoothly. All right. So that's a video file. You can keep that for yourself. You can put it on your, on your portable device, show it to friends in all its beautiful resolution. Now, to get back to outputting a GIF animation, Go back to your storyboard frames, right? Make sure it says forever here. Sometimes that will change when you change it to time frame. So we want it to loop through forever. And there we go. Very good. Now, I've already saved it, right? This is all after I've saved it as a PSD. Now I'm going to change the image size for a GIF animation. And for that, I want it to be 8 by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. Quite a bit less. Because we're not going for a digital camera at your local Cineplex. This is to be viewed on a computer screen. Right? And if we view that at 100%, you'll see that that's still plenty large on this computer screen. Right? But to code it so they can go into an online file format, which is the GIF format, it has to limit these millions of colors. Look how beautifully layered that sun is, right? And all those pixels in my creature, all those different colors, those have to be reduced to only 256 pixels total throughout the whole animation. So to do that, I have to go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. So this is not save as, it's file export save for web legacy. It's not rendering because it's not creating any new frames based on information. 
It's just reducing the quality of these frames and embedding that animation timing from our timeline into an online file. So we get GIF as our type, and that's what we want. That's the, the save for web legacy format we want for animations. It's at 100% now. You can see how it kind of evens out. The gradations in my sky are no longer there, right? Instead, they're fragmented. I like perceptual for that reason. You could try different formulations. Selective works pretty well. It depends on what colors you have. But this grid is going to change slightly depending on the options. So my, my preference is usually for perceptual. Full 256 colors. You could limit it if you want, but no reason to. It's already going to take up very little memory. Even the reflection is slightly there in these limited pixels. All right. Then you simply, I like to use Bicubic Smoother, you simply save it and make sure you save it to the desktop. You can keep your same name. I'm going to call this, I've outputted this a few times now. This is my final one. Okay. But it's the same as the last one I outputted on the last video. <clears throat> okay, so now I have an MP4 file. I have a GIF file. And I can test the GIF file, not by opening it in preview by double clicking, because that will just give me every frame individually, but by viewing it within a web browser like Chrome. And you see, even though it's only 256 colors, I can zoom in and I can see the individual dots, but it's pretty, pretty refined, you know, pretty high end for a GIF animation. And that's because it's about one megabyte per frame. So mine was 35 frames, something like that. So if I go to get info, it's about 30 megabytes in memory, which is not a small image file, but in terms of film or animation, that's tiny, <coughs> right? And it's set to loop. Whatever settings you put here, you can play it three times, you can play it once, you can set your own play it six times. <laughs> um, that's what it will be embedded into the file. Okay. Now, how do we make a final storyboard? How do we do this? This part of it. This is what I want you to do. You've already reduced your image, but this is the PSD. So this is not a GIF. This is not only 256 colors, but you've reduced it to 8 inches by 8 inches by 150. Oops. And you haven't saved over your PSD. I don't want you to save over your PSD. Now, this is what we're going to do. If you haven't already, we're going to select all your timeline frames. And we're going to flatten them into their own layers. Because I know some of you animated within the frames a little bit. And you have different, different layers turned on and off. So flatten frames into layers. Then you'll see it over here in layers. I'm going to separate it out just so you can see it clearly. Okay. That now from the top, I have 34 total frames. There's frame 34 at the top going all the way down to frame 1. Find frame 1. Then find whatever's underneath it. Because I've already done this, I have frames underneath it instead of layers. But erase everything underneath frame one. So I have layers there because I changed it a little bit. <clears throat> Delete all of those. So all you have are frame one through 34. By the way, your animation will still play beautifully. What you just told the computer to do is whatever is in the animation frame, whatever layers were turned on and off, whatever opacities were on, whatever layer styles were on, just Rasterize those all into flattened layers, one per frame. Just keep it simple, which is perfect. What it is, is it's like if I gave an animation to a company, they can make a, a card deck out of it. You know, one card per frame. That's what it just did. And that's perfect for making a storyboard. So now, in my layers, I have 34 different images I can choose from. Right now, it's on image 24. I'm thinking of my sketch. And my sketch, I can open it up. What is the middle stage? What is the very center panel in the, that nine, 
Nine.